guest. I am so excited to welcome Gwen. She is a dear friend of mine and just such an inspiration to me personally. And just she is such a badass. Like she's done over 160 million volume in the last four years alone. Her typical years are between 33 million on a bad year up to 60 million on a good year. And she's aiming for 100 million this year just for her and her team. So thank you so much, Gwen, for making time because yeah. you're such a wealth of knowledge, such an inspiration and just so collaborative and kind. So I appreciate you making time to connect and yes. share your insights and stories because I'm sure you have so many of them um, <laughs> over your years. And you still look amazing, of course, despite how many years Thank you've been in you. the industry. You just started when you were like 10 years old, right? <laughs> exactly. 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 <laughs> yeah. Thank and you so for having me. I'm so excited to be here. I just adore you so much. So the feelings mutual. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm so glad we connected through our me old, um, I call it my ex-husband, you know, our old brokerage. <laughs> there, are, yes. there are a few good things that came out of that, like there relationships were... with you. But exactly. most of it, it, was, it was our ex-husband. We shared an awful ex-husband. We shared an ex-husband together. And yes, that's how we met. We can always <laughs> have them to think. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's the one good thing that came out of it. It is. <laughs> true. Um, true. It is. Um, so yes, I'd love to sh um, learn. So how did you get started in this industry? And how did you get to where you are today? Like, was this your first career? Did you have another career or business before? And how did you build your business over the years? So I was, I'm a native of Colorado, but I was living L mm -hmm. in LA and I was an actress and I was on set and I led a group of women in entertainment. So we had directors of MTV, VH1, actresses, um, writers. And one of the ladies in, in that came had just sold her sound studio, Mimi Starrett. And I was pregnant with twins and I had a four-year-old and I had just finished shooting a Sony com a Sony commercial and my stomach was killing me. And you know how you have the honey wagon where you go in? Um, the guy who ran the honey wagon, I couldn't, my stomach was so big, I couldn't lay on the little part inside. So he laid a blanket on the side of the, where the grass was. And I laid down in between shooting and in between sets. And so I was leading this group and I was just thinking, I'm so tired. My stomach is killing me. And Mimi said, I think you'd be amazing at real estate. And that was sort of the first time a woman believed in me. And I was like, really? And so she was with Sotheby's on Rodeo Drive. I got my license and I closed two deals before I delivered the twin. And that's how I started. Thanks to her. She's she's still in L.A. She's still a top agent. I've seen her on a million dollar listing and I always laugh. And I'm like, Mimi. But it was really because of another woman believing in me and saying I could do something. That's amazing. And also, yeah. I think not just, I mean, of course, someone okay. believing in you is huge, but I also think it's the fact that you take action, right? That you, you yeah. were able to get that traction so quick. I know you as a person, I know you're like, go out there and get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> give me a goal and I'll just go with it. Yeah. yeah. And because I, I was that. terrified, it was such a high failure rate in LA. It was like a 96 failure rate in the first time. And I was so terrified. And I passed the first time, but I had a little kid and I was pregnant and I just wanted to be, I wanted to do something that was merit based, didn't have anything to do with whatever looks or what you were wearing that day. And it's, it's been really fulfilling. Yeah. She trained me. She, she taught me oh. amazing stuff. So, yeah. And so she was your first mentor basically in the business. Yeah. She was my first mentor. and She just taught me how to be gentle and kind while you're teaching and to lead by example. And really, one of the best ways I learned is she let me follow her and watch her interact with sellers, watch her go on a listing presentation. I mean, I was actually having people that were so excited I was in real estate. They were giving me clients and I needed her to teach me with my own client. And so I sort of shadowed her and followed her everywhere and just watched her interaction and her finesse. And, and then, of course, you develop your own you know cadence and but that was the best way of learning is being by someone's side and following them around I agree I think I think having the right mentor and shadowing is one of the best ways to learn it's how I learned as well and that's what I recommend to newer agents but I also yes. realized like through trial and error that it takes a certain type of personality to learn through shadowing it has to be the oh, self-starters yeah. 
the go-getters, yeah. right? Because a lot of people are like, yeah, they still don't get it. But I'm like, I can observe <laughs> and shadow and learn from that. And I think you are you the same have type. to be ambitious and you have to have drive and grit. Yeah. If you don't, I don't know how you'll make it in real estate. Exactly. Sadly. And, and I also think something. Fan art. Oh, it's definitely not. But I think something else you share that's really interesting is that like the people were so excited that you were in real estate. They were sending you clients and business because yeah. I think that shows like I always tell you, it's like if you're coming from another industry or you're, you know, you're new to real estate, think about your current network think about your current sphere think about your transferable skills and who you are as a person like we have agents in our team too that hit the ground running and it's just because if you're that type of person who's already trustworthy already likable already competent already has a reputation for being you know accountable for being a go-getter people aren't going to want to do business with you they're going to know like no matter what industry you're in no matter what business you do i trust that gwen is going to kick ass right and so that's i think huge on your reputation as a person you know, and I think that's another important lesson in that if you are that person that already has that reputation and that already that character, people are going to recognize that I want to do business with you. And I always say respect is earned, not given. <laughs> oh, 100 percent. And I always been teaching lately. It's not really who you know. It's who knows you. That's right. If you think about it, it's who knows you that wants to work with you, that wants to refer you. Yeah. And you're right. All those people that took a chance on me is they did. They knew my character and they believed in me. Um, but your sphere is so important and who surrounds yourself, you surround yourself with. But you have to actually also um, perform. And that's the missing piece. You have to be able to perform. <laughs> yes. Yes. And because I think one of the most I don't know if you hear this a lot. I've heard a lot where the people like I feel like they feel almost entitled to do business with their friends and family. And yeah. I'm like, just because you're in real estate doesn't mean everyone's going to want to do business with you. But on the other hand, I've kind of here, like, I experienced that where literally everyone who knows me wants to do business with me. And they're like, how come? But I like my own cousin or my own brother or my own sister-in-law. And I'm like, because you haven't earned their respect. I was like, what kind of person are you on a personal note, right? Not even not just business, but like, if you're planning a dinner party, are you like, you know, do you have everything organized, you know? If you say you're going to be at their birthday party or help them out, help them set up, are you going to show up and be there? Or are you going to flake on them last minute? Because if you do that in your personal life, people are not going to trust you in their your professional yeah. life. Person so. of excellence. You've got to be a person of excellence. Uh -huh. And you've got to have great follow through and, uh -huh. and, and great communication skills. And you learn this as a new agent. I mean, you fail and you succeed and then you learn how. But But really, everyone wants the same thing. They want to feel important. They want to feel taken care of. It's the biggest investment they're going to make and you need to do everything for them and be in the details. And I think how it makes probably you and I different because we're very similar is that we do concierge things. We do things people don't think of or don't want to do. And that's called going above and beyond. And going above and beyond is what every person should be given in real estate. And also it makes you a better person, but it makes you a better realtor. And that's how you get your referrals. I'm 100% referral based right now. Yeah. Same I with have me. Been. Yeah. It is because of what we provide, the experience we yeah. provide, the dedication we provide and the excellence we provide. And yes. I think that's, that's what I would teach anyone in real estate is, yeah. is go above and beyond. I agree. It's one of our core values, actually. Um, we have core values defined for our company. And one of them is called world-class service. And it's exactly that. Yeah. It's like, if you want yeah. to create a raving fan base and referral based business, you have to provide world class service, which means going above and beyond, not doing the bare minimum and genuinely caring about people. And yes, putting I them like, first. Yes. If you put people before the money, the money will always come. But you yes. have to put the person in the relationship before the deal. Yes. And yeah. and I, I agree with that 100 percent. I do the yeah. same. Yeah, I've been repeating it a lot lately, but it's like there's three keys to success in real estate. I say add value care the most and solve problems that's it yeah. i was like simplify yes. it and that's really all you have to do <laughs> it's simple but it's true it's so true <laughs> yeah and so you've done amazing and i know like i'm the same way where it's like i prioritize people over profit purpose over profit i've always done that and that's i think what's allowed me to thrive but of course all the agents um new and season always want to hear like the numbers right so the metrics like what is the most you've made in a year gcy wise because i know you've had some killer years so 
Oh, <laughs> over a million. Oh, that's amazing. And that's yeah. just an example of what you can accomplish when you do what you do, mm-hmm. right? Like, because a yeah. lot of you agents, I think, they're like, oh my God, I want to make my first 100,000. I was like, you're yeah. dreaming too small. Too small. I tell well, them, I like, tell people that small. three, there's the three things. Yeah. There's the goal of, you know, you know how to do it. There's a goal you set and I can do that okay. goal. You and I uh-huh. can do it with our eyes closed. The uh-huh. second goal, you might not know how to do it, but we can certainly figure it out. We're go-getters. The third goal, you have no idea how to get that goal. That's the goal I go for. That third one, I have no idea because once you put that out there, everything starts coming together to line up. So big goals, big goals. Don't go low. Yeah. I, I love it to my kids. It's true. It's true because- it's like you got to shoot bit like go big or go home, right? I always say. And yes. then I'm part of a group called EO Entrepreneurs or Global Mastermind of um, million, multi million dollar entrepreneurs. And so cool. we call them B Hags, big, hairy, audacious goals. So what's your B Hag? Right? Yeah. <laughs> B Hag, B, big, hairy, audacious, audacious goal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have so to we say how a B Hag. Yeah. What's your B Hag? What's be your big, hairy, audacious goal? So like, when agents on my team tell me, I go like, what's your, what'd you do last year? Like when we do the annual review, I was like, what was your volume last year? And then I was like, tell me your goal this year. So one of them was like, she did just over 10 million, um, a little bit under 11, right? I was like, what's your goal this year? She's like, I want to double that. I want to do 20 million. I was like, let's triple it. Yes. I was like 30. Yes. I was like, you're dreaming too small. Yeah. And before 30. she 30 came, be the yeah, 30, right? That's what I said. I was like, yeah. And before she came to me, her highest sale was 800,000. Um, at, since she's come to me less than like, I think it's only been three or four months, maybe. Um, her first listing with me is 2.749. But it's like, that's so great. That's got to make her feel good. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it's all about, but the environment and who you're with, right? Yeah. That makes a and huge difference. encourages you. My highest sale yeah. was 7.6 million. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. That's what I was going to ask you next. That's what I was the most, most, most. What's the most expensive property you sold? And how did you get that buyer listing? Was it a buyer listing? And how did you get that client? It is so, so interesting. Um, So interesting. It was listed by another company and by a really good agent that I know. He's he's a dear friend. And we met the sellers and they just loved, they loved me. Um, And we just took over the listing. It was during COVID. We just, the way... I've concierged the marketing and the detail to marketing is a little bit different than what people do because I just don't do the basic. But we had three billionaires drive in their minivans with their kids and nannies and dogs because I cleaned up the dog poop on the front lawn. One time I was like, this is definitely going above and beyond. And we we didn't sell it to them. We sold it to someone else who was in Aspen renting a townhouse. And they had six kids I think six kids so they bought it and completely gutted it but that was a referral that was through someone that we knew it was a, a referral of a friend that just knew the kind of business for sure yeah that's awesome it was awesome yeah, you saw some awesome great properties house. <laughs> fun properties <laughs> yeah and I'd love to hear your opinion on this what are some reasons that you think agents fail in this industry and on the flip mm. side why do you think you thrived in this industry? You know, you didn't just survive all these years. You thrived yeah, yeah. over various markets in such, like in this industry with such a high failure rate. So I'd love to hear both well, sides of that. I, it's, it's kind of sandwiched. I think agents fail because they don't follow up. Do you know that majority of agents under 20% don't even follow up with their past clients? It's like such a small percentage. And you, you do the deal and then you forget about that. Well, they should be in your, your database, your CRM. You should be following up with them on a regular basis. I have perfected my CRM so it's like the juiciest people in there and it's people I've worked with and I do. And so I think where I succeed is I do follow up. I follow up with emails, texts, phone calls, and also the marketing that I've developed with my marketing team and what gets sent out. So it's follow up is key. I, I can't believe how many agents be like, oh yeah, I sold that house and I never heard from them again. But well, did you talk to them? They don't have to talk to you. It's yeah. you. Yep. Huge. That's such an important, yeah. Yeah, that because I'll have clients that send me their kids and now their kids' kids. We're doing like legacy clients. 
But yeah. there's no way they would do that if I hadn't have an ongoing communication with them and an ongoing face to face or follow up or. And so I do things quarterly. I do gifts too. We do certain things at certain times during the year. Um, and it's funny because you know you'll send out something to to whatever your database is. Let's say it's 200 people, and I'll send out some great gift. And sometimes you only hear from a very small percentage. But over time, people will be like, oh my gosh, I never thanked you. Or I remember you did that. You never forget about me. And then you'll get a client. And it's it's really just keeping that relationship uh-huh. in the front of their mind. I love that. And actually, can you share specifics? I'd love to hear because that's yeah. that's actually the, I've interviewed so many agents at this point. You're the first ones who, who's mentioned like that quarterly. Is it an event you do? Is it a dinner? Is it like, yeah. what kind of, or do you have examples of gifts you sent or yeah. something? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So right now I'm I'm getting ready to do a big a big event which I haven't done yet. But I always do dinners and lunches with people and I make sure I I have a one-on-one time with them and their spouse and I'll bring my spouse and so and if I'm doing a hosting a charity event I'll I'll host a table and invite clients, right? But what I always do every Valentine's I do candy. I do a beautiful box of candy with a note and always at Thanksgiving, I do a thankful for you. And people like, like, look for it now. Um, But I do something weekly, monthly, quarterly, and yearly. Yeah, that kind of follow up. I don't and I do something different for each. So I have these beautiful postcards that I do that are amazing that took me forever to figure out with a call to action with some information that's interesting to people. I send those out once a month to my CRM. I have a newsletter and I do video now in the newsletter because as you and I know, video is everything. It, most people are doing it. And it's not the newsletter that you get that's like everybody gets the same stuff. It's something that has a little spice in it that's interesting. Why does anyone want to watch that if it's the same as everyone else? Um, and then I do something for people's birthday, which I'm sure a lot most people do. Um, or if they have a special occasion, like one of my McDonald's clients, they just opened another McDonald's and they own them all over Colorado and Parker. So I went, showed up, saw them and I did a huge video for them. It went like viral, like 40,000 views. And they were so, so grateful that I would come and support them in that. It's just doing little things to be involved. Going to someone, someone sends you their two-year-old's birthday party, go. You just, you just got to show up. So different things, but and then Christmas, we do. I do something as well. So I, those are the three holidays I focus the most on. Okay, awesome. I love yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah. all your ideas, and I agree. I, I've done a lot of the little things too. And sometimes it's like, I think with newer agents, and they don't have the budget yet, they're like, "Well, I don't know if I have the budget to do the gifts." But like, I love what you share. That I think the gifts are great. I'm a, I'm a gift giver too, and I love giving gifts. Um, so I'm that kind of person. But I know earlier on in my career, I didn't have the budget to do what I do now. Right. So earlier on in my career, though, I did what you said, which is if if I had a client that had a opening or had their birthday party or their kid's birthday or whatever it was, I'd show up and, you know, whatever it is. And like maybe it's promoting their business. Maybe it's giving a connection, but it's adding value and showing I care in some way. And a lot of those ways may be free, like doing an Instagram reel for their new business doesn't cost you anything but your time. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I think that's it amazing. was great. And they were <laughs> and I, and it was so much fun for me. I didn't plan on doing it. I wanted to show up because <laughs> it was their first day opening and yeah. support them. And then yeah. we're going in the back. I'm meeting their seeing their kids again. I'm like, I should just video all this. And it was just amazing. So there's even if you don't have a budget, and I agree a lot of people in the beginning don't, there's little things that you can do to provide value to each client and and that's the thing. You got to sit down and look at your sphere and go, what is going to work most for, for my sphere? Because my sphere is not someone else's sphere. Their sphere is not my sphere. And what is your price point you're working at? I know my average sale of what that price point is. And that's what I really focus on. Mm-hmm. What is that? What's your average sale price point? It's, if you average it out, it's it's one one eight two million on average on every deal. And then obviously I go up to 10 million, but the it averages out if you add them together and just know that and then know those people and what are you doing to bring value to that like they're not going to care about a market report on houses that are selling for half a million dollars what do they care their house is worth three million so know your client like i have a 6.7 million dollar house right now 
that's been a completely different marketing animal. Yeah. Got a gun range inside. <laughs> I need to fly there to do a YouTube video with you. Why don't you come? I'm going to come over. Yes. I'm going to come you're flying out here. You, we gotta go do all mine, and then I've got one Howard Golf Club for four million. Yeah. Like, there's just each <laughs> one has its own nuance, yeah. and it's been there's so much fun. Yeah, you you definitely need to come to do video. Yes, I do. Gosh, we, and I, we would tear this town. <laughs> it is, yeah. And I think, and I love that you said, you know, video marketing that you do that in your newsletters, yeah. even because I agree with you that video marketing is where the industry is going. It's where business is going. And yeah. the people who are not hopping on it, it's like adapt or die, Good. right? You got to grow yeah. with the industry. You got to grow with the times. So, well, and sometimes um, Giselle had, was one who coached me, and I know you know her as well. She's a, a, the most amazing coach ever, and I love her so much. And she talks about imposter syndrome that we all feel like scared. I mean, I, I, I made my living on camera from 15 years old till, you know, now still. And I still sometimes feel like, oh, I look so stupid. I look ugly. I said the wrong thing. Everybody feels that way. You just have to do it. And I, I just love that she talks about that so much because we tend to think, I mean, you and I are very confident. We're confident girls. Sometimes I don't feel confident. I just know how to look confident. And then, you know, go cry later or something. <laughs> like, you know, you have to just do it and embrace it and i think that's what holds a lot of people back they're scared yeah, they are and everyone's scared at some point and i always say yeah. like so a lot of people have been asking me recently because they're like but you're such a natural like i just watch you and you're such you and i was like you know you what are. there's no such thing as a natural naturals have just done the thing an unnatural amount of times and it's because of all the years of practice that i've done on camera where i first started i was awkward i was like you know i just i was so scared and and then I still, in the best way, honestly, like that imposter syndrome, I felt it almost all my life. I finally figured out kind of like the solution or the antidote to that. And it's kind of crazy because I, I just spoke about it. I did Tony Robbins' Date with Destiny and it changed my life. And the reason I realized anyone who's ever experienced anxiety, fear, all that imposter syndrome, right? I was like, it's only a really small shift that can cure all that. And I just spoke about it at a, I spoke at an event over the weekend with uh, Perez Hilton, actually. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm speaking on the same stage as Perez Hilton. I'm like, I made it. But that's so cool. <laughs> but um, but uh, what I said was, how many of you have experienced imposter syndrome or fear or anxiety and allowed that to keep you from your goals or your dreams or getting on camera, which is important as a business owner in this day and age? And I was like, do you want to hear how to get over that? And everyone's like, hell yeah, right? And I was like, it's really simple. I was like. The reason we feel that way, I felt that most of my life, right? It's like a shift of mindset. When you are thinking like, oh my God, what if I look stupid? What if I have this in my nose? What if what if someone judges me? What if, you know, it's because you're focused on self. But if you shift this mindset to how can I serve? And you focus it from selfish to selfless. And what, who am I serving? How am I helping? Could this message help? someone make a million dollars could this message inspire someone could this message help them build wealth build legacy whatever it is like the problem you're trying to solve for your client could this help my client get into their dream home could this help them um create a home where it's multi-gen where they can live with their elderly parents where they can you know whatever it is like think about the solution you're providing and it's like uh, my social media coach is a uh, lady named Char Modell. She's amazing. And she says it's called dream outcome content. And so talk about the dream out, out, like outcome that you're helping people achieve. And so like when you focus on dream outcome content, you're not scared anymore because it's like, it's not about me. It's about you. It's about the audience. It's about the client. It's about who are you serving, not yourself. So shift that focus from self to serving and then posture syndrome just disappears. It's not, I love that. oh my God, am I capable? It's like, no, it's how can I help you? So yeah, that's the shift. I agree. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. that because we all get anxiety. Yeah. I do. And I think oh, that's I a wonderful yeah. thing to think about. Yeah. Yeah. So that was the shift that like, I was like, oh, wow. Light bulb moment. Like, yeah. Duh, light bulb. Like I just, <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. Tony Robbins. Yeah. You said you want to do it. I would go back. I want to do so... Tony Robbins. Let's do it. Yeah. So I did the um, virtual live stream and it like was amazing, but I would go in person. Mm -hmm. Like they're doing yeah. it in person. Um, a lot of my friends want to do it in person and they're doing it in December, but the network you get from that, I think 
honestly, that's an important thing to touch on too, even though it's like a later question I wanted to get to, like investing in personal development and personal growth, right? I think that is such a major key to success in business and in life. And so I'd love to hear what kind of programs or, you know, like what you've invested in, whether it's books or podcasts or seminars that have really helped you on your journey. So I do a little bit of both. I've I've definitely had a coach that I've paid. And then, you know, when, you know, that that helps you take everything you can from that. I've definitely read books and I've listened to podcasts because I'm in the car so much that honestly, the last thing I want to do is go home and read a book. I'd rather take a bath, watch a show with my husband, see my kids. So for me, I'd rather listen to a podcast and I, they range from everything from I've listened to Tony Robbins podcast, Bob Proctor. Um, sometimes I listen. He's so good. And it just depends on on what comes up. Um, my husband likes to listen to this podcast called All In. And it's a political one. And it actually is interesting because it's four different guys with completely diverse views. Uh, sometimes I do that. And the biggest thing is going to events where you can listen to someone speak and you can meet someone sitting next to you. I think those are the most powerful for me. I learned the best that way. So spend the money to do it. You got to just spend the money to do it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. I, I attend, I'm like a, a bit of like a personal growth, personal development conference junkie. And I, I definitely yeah. get the most value out of like the in-person conferences because just like you said, it's not just listening to people speak. It's that like the energy around you and connecting with people and even sharing the takeaways that, you know, like someone might have been like, well, oh, what was your favorite thing that they said today? Or what what did you learn today? And when they share and they like kind of digest and dissect what they've absorbed, you're like, oh, wow, I love that perspective or I love that takeaway. And you get even more out of it. So I agree with you. And the friends oh. you meet, like sometimes at some events you meet someone, I mean, like you, I met you and Lisa and right away I'm like, oh my gosh, soulmate <laughs> friends. Like yeah. you, you, you meet that and then you have, that's probably even more important than the work. Huh. because that's eternal like you have something that you you have that you could call a friend I think that the relationship part it feeds my soul the most because we grind I mean you and I the level that we work at it's exhausting like I don't think people would be interested following me around for a day when they see the crap that you have to do like it's not all glamorous yes you're listing this fabulous house that's the fun part the rest of it's not so fun like yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and people the hours see my in calendar. the car. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. People are like, ew. So I think they don't realize <laughs> and We get so, I get so driven with, with making goals and, and getting my day done that to go to an event and like have a, another friend, someone you can collaborate with is like uh, amazing. I think we, we need that as humans to feed our soul as well. It can't just be work and yeah, I, I get a lot out of that. Yeah, it's it's the camaraderie. And um, I mentioned it earlier, but the organization I joined, EO, it's really changed my life. And the reason it changed my life is because I'm in a group of like multimillionaire entrepreneurs who all think and work That's like so me, cool. who don't think I'm crazy for doing 12 to 14 hours a day, like some yeah. days a week when I actually can have enough to retire off. They're like, and, you know, normal people are like, why do you why are you still work so hard? I'm like, because I love what I do. <laughs> right. And it's like, I enjoy it. Like, I'm like, you enjoy watching Netflix. I enjoy, you know, learning. I enjoy teaching. I enjoy doing content days with my team. Like, I don't want, I'd be bored as hell watching Netflix for like five hours. I'd rather go learn, go do, go create and do something productive. Like, that's what brings me joy and fills my cup. And I think it's a certain type of like person and personality like you and I, where we're like, we could probably retire if we wanted to, but we're It'd just be boring. <laughs> Well, you want to be driven and I'm really being intentional about money this year with, with what you put in your SEP and what you save and your investments and the properties you own. And I think that's important because every real estate agent should own their own home and a rental property. But you know, most don't. And that's don't. another, and they that's don't. That's crazy. It's crazy. Yes. Yeah, so it's your industry. Huh. Every single one yeah. of your kids should own a home. I mean, oh, yeah. all my kids have money saved. My daughter is just sitting here listening. All of them have money saved to buy a house because the home ownership is how you become wealthy. And you're not throwing away your rent unless, I mean, I have a rental property. I love it when someone wants to pay the rent because they pay my mortgage. Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's actually one of our biggest missions with Real Rich Women um, is that we're going to teach agents how to transition and expand from just agent to investor because we're such big believers in that. Like my family came, I'm the child of first generation immigrants. So I've literally been in the business since I was 12 years old because my mom was an agent for 30 years and an investor as well. And so I helped our family build our portfolio from the ground up and we started with $5,000. Our portfolio is over 20 million today. Like no other way can you go from 5,000 to over 20 million. And that's just our family portfolio, not including, I have investments outside of our family portfolio as well. That's just my stuff personally. And so like, that's why people are like, how did you, because by the time I was 33, I achieved financial freedom. Like I could retire if I wanted to. I'm like, because I invested, because I saved, I sacrificed, I lived really frugally for many years in the beginning. And I took all that money and invested into real estate. Like when I bought my first house, I, in my twenties, I house hacked. I bought a four bedroom house. I lived in one of the rooms and I rented out three of the bedrooms. And I basically, what I saved, like basically how I offset my mortgage, I saved all that. And then I invested it into another property when I saved up enough for a down payment. And so I just, it was like a rinse and repeat and just growing our portfolio that way. And that's why it's like real estate investing is huge, but I can't believe how many agents and even brokerage owners I've met. Like some brokerage owners, like they have like 30 or 40 or 50, even a hundred agents and they don't have their own portfolio. And I was like, how are you like, you know, how do you not own investment properties when you own a brokerage? Firm? Like, it's so weird to me. Yeah, you got to own stuff. <laughs> it is good for us to teach because yeah. our first house was 265000 We scraped yeah. our money together. We were so, we just got married. I was pregnant. We were so, so young in our 20s. We sold that property for, uh, for just right under 800000 And we bought our next house. We sold that. I mean, that is what people don't realize. In, a, in, a, in five years, you usually double. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sometimes more. So on to commercial. Sometimes I, more. Yeah. So we started in residential. Commercial for sure. Yeah. We started in residential investing. Now our whole portfolio is commercial. One of the properties we acquired um, in 20, I think it was 2012. So it's been like 12 years now, but um, we got it a little over 3 million. It's worth over $12 million now. Like it's 11 buildings. It's like this whole office park that we own, but it, we 4 x our like value. This is like crazy, right? Yeah, that's crazy. But it's like, how can you do that? And the best part about investing is like in situations like that, that's how you build what Robert Kiyosaki calls tax-free wealth. And what tax-free wealth is, is when you increase the equity of a property, you could do a cash out refi. And that cash out refi is not income and it's not a sale. So there's no capital gains and there's no income tax. And so you basically get tax-free wealth. You just pay the interest rate on that loan. And so we did a cash out refi um, in the seven figure range. And so we got basically to pull out about a million dollars in equity tax free, which is the hack of all the multi millionaires, which is awesome. That's a good <laughs> hack. And see, I don't even know that hack. Commercial, I don't know as well. Yeah. And that's what I want to yeah. embrace yeah. now later in my career. But I think that's amazing. Yeah. That's so amazing. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. I'll teach you all about it. It's awesome. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, you can do it. I mean, that's the thing. Like, I can it's do always it. something that you need to, because you, you have the cash flow, right? So I say with commercial real estate, the thing is you have to understand it's high risk, high reward. You need a lot of cash and capital because it just, the down payment required is so much greater. Like it's usually, so instead of like residential investment properties qualify, it's usually 20 to 25% down. On the commercial side, it's based on the NOI. So that operating income. And it's based on a DSCR debt service coverage ratio of that NOI. And so based on the interest rate and the NOI of the property, your down payment required might be some random percent, like 35.2% or 36.9%. Right, so you have to have the cash to put it down. Yeah, because if you're talking about a $5 yeah. million dollar property, that 10 to 15% is going to be a huge on, you know, like that's a lot more cash than required. So, and then the working capital too, you definitely want to keep high six figure reserves um, because we've had um, repairs come up at our properties where we're like, that's a $50,000 problem that we have to just shell out. <laughs> where I'm like, oh, lovely. <laughs> so unfortunately, that's the, that's the reality of things. So I'm like, unfortunately, there's no home warranty policies that can offset the big repair risk like you do in residential. And so I think residential investing is the best if you don't have as much capital and to start out. But um, once you have the cash and you have the cash flow, then commercial is definitely more lucrative. So it just depends on your risk tolerance and your cash, basically and your, your cash capital flow. expense. Yeah, your cash yeah. flow, basically. What do you have saved? Like, yeah, what do you have saved? 
in order that you can invest and place down and what do you have cash flow wise that you can use to sustain the property because also commercial vacancies tend to be a lot longer like residential you usually don't see a property vacant for more than maybe a month or two commercial you can get have vacancy for over a year sometimes over two years because it takes much longer because the lease terms are five seven or ten years usually so once you get a tenant in you're kind of good for a few years but in the beginning you could be like 12 18 24 months where you're looking for a tenant which is, and you got to be able to carry that uh, vacancy. You have to, yeah, exactly. You have to have the wherewithal for that one. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's a whole different world, but I don't know. I love it. Totally different, I'm but I love so it. I'm so proud of you that you have that. <laughs> I you. think that's amazing that you can talk about it. I think that's great. I forget sometimes because like um, I'm in that EO group that I mentioned and when I, jo- I joined two years ago and I like, and people started asking me about commercial real estate and real estate investing. And these are all entrepreneurs who have like 10, 30, 50, $100 million businesses. And they'd come to me for real estate investing advice. And I'd be like, I'm like 20 years younger than you. Why are you coming to me for advice? Kind of I like, love it. and then like, um, I realized like, I didn't, I had that imposter syndrome, like you were saying. I was like, I'm, I'm so much younger than you. Your business is like 10x what my business does. Like, I don't understand why you're asking me for advice. Like, was my was the dialogue in my head? And then I realized, well, they're an expert in their maybe tech company, but they don't know real estate. And I grew up in this. Like, it's like what I live, breathe, and eat, right? Like, I'm like, I've been in this, even though I'm, I was, you know, I'm in my 30s still, but even though I was like 33 at the time, I was like, with over 20 years of experience, because I've been working with my mom since I was 12. Yeah. And so luckily- And we can help girls with sales. We yeah. Any sales you and I can help yes. people with is oh, the yeah. thing they don't realize with yeah. real estate. Yeah, exactly. And so- it's just like I didn't realize how much I knew because I I just I guess I grew up with it. I thought everyone just knew it until I got into that group. And and then these these multimillionaires were asking me and I was like, this is I was like, I'm very confused. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I, yeah. So I was like, it's that imposter syndrome, though. We all live with it. I like I said, I lived with it where I was like, I don't understand. I'm I'm not sure why you're asking me for advice. I'm very I feel very, very awkward <laughs> that like people wanted me to go to lunch with them. And I'm like, you just sold your business for like $18 million. Like, why Why are you asking me for advice? <laughs> like, literally. Like, someone like had an $18 million exit and they're like, well, I'm thinking about investing in real estate because I just sold my company for $18 million and I don't know what to do with it. So can you tell me? And I'm like, yeah, yes, <laughs> okay. I actually can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can. But at yeah, first I, I was can. definitely intimidated by it. I was like, how did you sell your business for 18 million? I want to learn. So I want to hear that story first. I want to hear that story. I know. I want to hear that story, story first and learn how I can sell a business for $18 million. And then and then let's talk about real estate right now. But so when I had those, like, I would be like, oh, my God, why, why is this person coming to me for advice? So I don't know. I, I think I share that just to say, like, everyone, just like you said earlier, feels the imposter syndrome, right? And so... It's perfectly normal to feel imposter syndrome. Like we all, we've all been there. Um, and I think a lot of agents want to know this one. So, how did you get your first clients, like your first one, two, three, five as clients as a brand new agent? And then now that you're established, where do you do? I think you said referral based, right? Where did your last five clients come from? Probably all referrals. Yeah. So, how about in the beginning then? Where, where did you get your first few clients from? So, my first client was my friend. He had just gotten married and they and they they didn't have any kids yet. And I had, you know, the twins and my son and I was still pregnant. And he just loved me as a person. We'd been friends for years and he took a chance on me and said, well, I'm looking to buy a house. And I said, well, would you consider letting me find it? And, and he did. And my mentor at that time, that's where I shadowed her on that whole deal. Because, you know, when you're brand spanking new, you don't know how to do anything. Um, so really my first few clients were friends. It's like, who loves you? That's who you have to say, take a chance on me. But they saw that it was something that was really natural for me and I loved it and I was good at it. And then now, yes, it's, it's the referral base. It's the friend of the friend, it's the daughter, it's the neighbor. Uh, it's your, your, even your vendors, you know, like right now I'm looking on a little property. One of my, my daughter's girlfriends is buying her first property. And she called me and I, she's like, I know you don't do this price range, but would you? And I said, oh my gosh, that's like such an honor. It's your first house and you're 22 years old. Yeah, I'm going to help you. That's amazing. 
So we're going out tomorrow, but like the, it's all referral. You, you've got to do the referral. I don't do the cold calls. I don't do the expireds. I don't, that to me sounds like death. It's not my personality. Some people I think like that because they don't have to have the contacts, but I would not be doing real estate if I had to do any of those things. Yeah. And I love that you said that and share that so candidly because I think a lot of these, I call it male pal and stale gurus in this industry, like the Mike Ferries of the world are all about the cold calling and all that. And I'm like, I can't do it. That's not me. And it's like, and it's okay if that's not you. And I always tell agents, I was like, there is no one size fits all. It's kind of like ice cream flavors. Yeah. Everyone has different preferences, right? Like, it's like you could like cookies and cream ice cream or you like chocolate or mint chocolate chip, right? Everyone has their own preference. And so there is no one size fits all. It's what fits with your personality and your preferences. And that's what's going to make you happy. That's what's going to allow you to thrive. And so I'll, you and I are very similar, of course. Like we're like, we're both relationship based. I'm not, I would not want to be pounding phones and calling, cold calling fizzbos. Like I'm not salesy. My thing is serve, don't sell. Like, and so what yeah, I do serve. is I do serve. Yes, yeah, serve. Exactly. Serve, don't sell. Yeah. And so you mm-hmm. and I, and I see your content and I love your content. And it's like exactly that. It's like we share valuable information and we attract the clients. We attract the referrals. Right. And so that's in alignment with me and same with you. And also relationship building, like you mentioned, and just going to people's birthday parties, you know, hosting community events, sponsoring a table at a charity gala and, and inviting your friends you know, and things like that. I think that's really where I thrive and where you thrive. And I love that you share that because I think a lot of people are afraid to say like, oh, I don't cold call. I'm like, no, what's wrong with that? I, I don't, you don't have call. to. I, I don't never, like ever in my history of do- doing <laughs> yeah. it. Cause that's not, I don't want to talk to someone that wants to hang up on me. Plus, yeah. how do I know I want to work with them? That's yes. the other thing. Wow. Well, how do you know yes. you're not a creep? I don't exactly. want to do that. <laughs> I, if I meet you and like you, and I, yes. and, and I see your house because I've gone on a listing appointment and I I can refer that person out if I don't feel it's the right fit for me because all personalities are different. So, yeah, I would say, yeah, one of the girls that just came on my team is the sweetest girl and I love her so much. I have, I have Megan and I have Sierra and Sierra's mom is a really good friend of mine and she got her license and she was she was working through someone I know who's a really great guy. But... His business is cold calling. So she was in a room all day cold calling. So the mother-in-law called me. She said, she's dying. What can we do? And I said, I'll, I'll hire her. So I brought her over and now she's shadowing me and helping me with showings and everything and learning. She's just like, oh my gosh, I do want to do real estate because this is what I want to do. I said, yeah, no one wants to get hung up on and told, you know, screamed at all day long. <laughs> That's really hard. And if you do like it, go, oh, you're an amazing person. Like, keep doing it so yeah yeah and I think everyone's person just like you said and I, I kind of going back to what you said right way in the beginning um about being like gentle and sh- um kind right your first mentor I think it has a lot to do with that where part of it is like there are some women who are really in their masculine energy but I feel like most women I think our nature is to be more softer and you could be soft and strong you could be gentle and kind, but still like a badass bitch, right? That's the way I say it, right? Yeah. And a boss babe. You can do all and that. still be gentle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, and you could still be kind. You can lead with love and kindness. And people who are like that, I feel like we're not really, we don't want to be that like shove it down your throat, that cold call. I feel like that. Um, I think there's a place for cold calling. Like, for instance, if you're trying to uncover an off-market opportunity that's very specific, like your client wants a home in this community, and there's oh, yeah. no if you're doing it for your client for sales. Yes. yes. That's different. But to get clients, well, I agree someone. with you. Yes. You're you're exactly. serving that person. So then you don't feel like it's soulless and that, you know, yeah. you can take someone yeah. hanging up on you because you're doing it for a greater purpose. If you have a greater purpose, and there's also and like look, some people have to do it. They're starting out and they don't know anything else. And I totally understand that. Everyone's motivation, like the reason why I doubled my business the first time is. My husband had a brain tumor removed. We didn't know if he was going to survive. I needed to double my business to provide for my three kids in case he passed away or couldn't function or couldn't work. So everyone's motivation at that point, I probably would have done anything. But I I made a mental note and I had a mind shift of I'm doubling my business. And I think we have to every year go in the new year with that mindset of growth. 
not stagnant, not accepting the old. Yeah. Uh, wow. Is he okay now? He's okay. Yeah, yeah he made it. Oh, he, he is deaf on the left side. They cut his balance. But after falling a lot, his body shifted. And now he you would never know he can ride a motorcycle. And um, he's totally functioning. But, you know, that was a really scary time. And we didn't know. And his healing was not quick. That took a process. And I think for us with little kids, we needed two incomes. And so everybody, that's another thing you look at when you're young and you haven't, you you know, you haven't saved a lot and you're, all your money's going into your mortgage. What do you do? And yeah. so it, yeah. it's very interesting. I think the, that's a really important, I think there's actually two really important lessons from your story and experience. And thank you for sharing so vulnerably. Yeah. I know it's not easy <laughs> to do that. Um, and I think, you know, the two lessons I would say is one is burn the boats, right? When you have, it's not a matter of if it's a matter of how, like you make that determination. I have to do this. I have to double. I have to make this work because it's a matter of like survival. It's a matter of like, it's not if, then you do it because you don't give yourself an out. You don't give yourself a plan B. It's just like, I need to do this. Right. And then also the, what yeah, you said, like, you know, if it's you're, a mindset. Yeah, it is. It's a mindset shift oh, you, when you, you do what you did. You, you have to. And I had to do it again through COVID. I, I worked all through COVID. I did, you know, driveway closings outside the, on the lawn closings. I worked the whole time through COVID. And I did 53 million that year in COVID because my husband's company was entertainment. They shut down in COVID. So we didn't have our dual income. And so when he came to me and said, my business partner and I are going to take a salary. We're just going to work for the health benefits which was great for us, I went, okay, well, what's, we had our budget. What's the other part of the money? Where's that, that, where's that coming from? Cause you know, we weren't an equal, it was a shift. And he said, we'll just use our savings. And I went, oh no, we are too old. Do you know how hard that would be to re make that back? So then my mind shift shifted again. And I just said, I'm gonna, I want to cover everything now. I want to shift it to everything. And so that's how we got through COVID. It was rough, you know? So I think mindset is so powerful. You can do anything if you, like you said, you give no way out. There's no chance of failure. You are only going forward and succeeding. And I think people forget that. You have to think powerfully and you have to believe in yourself. Yeah. Oh yeah. There was like a period of time where I was stuck like in 150,000 a year and- and then I like did a Tony Robbins program and I went to 300,000 next year and then 600,000 next yeah. year. So yeah, it's like, mindset. It, it's all mindset. It's and I realized that. Yeah. And I went from, yeah, it's I a have double, double, double. On cards. <laughs> yeah. I say them every day. I pull them out. If I'm feeling down, yeah. I pull out my card and I just say my mantra and then you move on. You yeah. just don't let your mind go into the gutter of exactly despair or doubt, self doubt. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think, and I love that you say that you pull them out every day too, because I always say <laughs> mindset training is like going to the gym. Like you have to do it consistently. Because yeah. some people think like, oh, I'm going to go to one seminar or one conference and it's going to change everything. And I'm like, uh, it will, but you have to still maintain it. It's kind of like yeah. if you did a detox or a diet and then you go back to eating like shit, guess what? You're going to go back to feeling like shit. And so it's the same thing. Or if you're going to the gym consistently and all of a sudden you fall off for five months, you're not going to feel the same. And so the mindset thing is a consistent every day, every week kind of thing. So, yeah, it's huge. I have a vision and I board that's you. on my counter in my bathroom <laughs> that I looked at. Hello? Because, it, you know, we're in a negative society where people yeah. are negative. They're, they're not Unfortunately, positive. yeah. And so we have yeah. to create that for ourselves. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately. I have a vision and so, some days you do feel down yeah. and you feel you f you do. They're so important. You feel like you're yeah. getting kicked in the teeth and you might have a down day and you can let yourself feel it for a second, but then you have to be done and move on. So I have like 20 cards. They are like dirty and torn and I just say them in the car, flip them over. And that's when you put on a podcast like Tony Robbins or Bob Proctor or, you know, something that's going to cheer you up because we have to be filling ourselves with, with positivity because it's the world is negative. And they want to see what you can't do. And I just get so tired of, I can do whatever I want to do. You can exactly. do whatever you want to do. Yeah. If, as long as you believe it. 
it's like Bob Proctor says it, right? It. You know, if you can, if your mind can conceive it, and if you can believe it, then you can, it, it can happen, basically. Like that's how we I, got I an airplane. People are like, well, I'm like, how do you think we got an airplane? Someone thought it. Someone told them they were nuts. Yeah, they thought I could do it anyway, and they did it. Like, yeah, we just have to remind each other, and also building each other up. It's so easy to like rip someone a new one. Why can't it be just as easy to pay someone a compliment? So I really want to be intentional about that too. Like where it's paying a woman a compliment it does not, it's nothing for you, but it makes her feel so good. When someone takes time to say something to me, I just think that's the greatest compliment that you take time to tell me that. And my daughter is great at it. She compliments everybody. I'm always like, gosh, that makes me feel good to see her doing that. That girl probably feels so good. Like, we need to remember to do that for each other, you know? I love that. And then, yeah, be, just being genuine with the compliments, I, I agree with that. And it's just like, just it doesn't cost anything to be kind, you know? And I don't know why more people don't just do. I actually have, like, a random acts of kindness challenge that I'm putting on our... So we, um, I'm starting a KPIs, um, basically, key metric, uh, what, key performance indicators, right? I'm starting a KPI challenge with our team next quarter for Q2. And one of the KPIs I have on retention and referrals is random act of kindness with some a past client. And I was like, what that means is, okay, like you all probably are connected with a lot of your past clients on social media, right? I was like, stalk their stories a little and see what I they're do up that. to. Like, mm-hmm. I was like, if I have a client or a fr- even if it's a friend, right? Let's just say, so past client or sphere of influence, random act of kindness. And so for instance, if I see that my friend's like, oh, I'm feeling sick, like, and I know where they live, I'll DoorDash them some soup. It cost me, like, what, 20 bucks with tip and tax, right? But I would just, like, DoorDash some soup. And it's some random act of kindness, and it's, like, you're just doing it to show you care and be kind. But something so small, like, people really remember and appreciate that. They're like, oh, my God, like, you know, you sent me soup last time I was sick, right? And so it's something well, so simple and small. Did you hear, I did a post on kindness. I don't know if you listened to that where I was talking about what kindness means. I cannot tell you how many people DM'd me on that one. It was crazy. I'm going to go back and look. I want to see that one. Go back and look at it. I'm outside in my $4 million listing that you're going to come do a video on. Ah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I will. I just talked about what kindness is. It's long, but it was so good. And I was just shocked. Like people really are longing for gentle touches, you know, words of encouragement to know they're loved, that they're thought about. And so um, every day I do three calls, my assistant puts them in my phone. And if I can't reach that person, I text them. They don't always respond, but it doesn't even matter. It's that you were thinking of them and it really was, I was, you know, you think of them all the time. And I think that's, it's super important. Yeah. You got to watch the video and let me know what you think. I know I have to watch a good one. it's a good it one. <laughs> yeah. And it's just about authenticity, vulnerability, and yeah. that kindness. And um, I did one, uh, let's see, it was a, it was a few oh. months ago, but I, I experienced like, I was pretty, I was like severely depressed um, at one point, yeah. like last year. And I did a video on it and I was like, you know, no one talks about the tough times, especially as business leaders. You don't talk about the anxiety and the depression because you don't want to appear weak and you don't want to appear like you're un- incompetent. But how many people are going through it and if you just share it and connect it and like after I didn't talk about it until after I was out of it but then when I started talking about it a lot of my friends and clients were like you know I was feeling that way last year too like my because a lot of my friends are entrepreneurs and so they're all like my business was struggling and I thought I did something wrong I thought I'm incompetent and then when we all started talking about like no we all had a shitty year in business like you know and so last year was rough yeah and when you start talking about that and being candid, being kind, you build that camaraderie and that rapport and that trust and that like support system because people are like, wow, you know, I didn't know I needed this, but thank you for sharing. Thank you for like that because now I feel like, okay, I don't feel like I'm the failure. I feel like, okay, it's not just me, right? So I agree. It makes sense. And yeah, that yeah. it looks so great. You're doing all these houses in yeah. your life. So <laughs> you're working with all these athletes. Your life's so perfect. Well, last year, I've never dealt with anxiety ever. Yeah. Yeah, I had same. debilitating anxiety. I oh, had a couple too. things happen to me that almost put me under where I was oh like, I'm just going to check out a life. I'm not going <laughs> to be too real estate. It was horrible. And I learned a couple things. 
that the the wise who hurt you, who healed you, who helped you, that's a powerful thing when you're totally in the crapper, when you're in the pit of hell, to see who comes around and to see who doesn't. That was ter- really eye-opening and horrible. But also to get through it and be able to say, you know, I have talked about it on Instagram about how I had a, last year was rough, a couple low points. But I think it's good to be successful like where you and I are at and to be able to say, yeah, we felt anxiety where I literally didn't want to get out of bed. Oh my God, I, me too. And I never I felt like that in my whole to life. Anyone. Yeah. No, oh, I was crying too. all the time. No. I was scared. Yeah. And literally I, I held on to a scripture. I went in, went in and someone said this scripture and it was a, and I had felt dread, dread, dread. I didn't know how to expel, explain to someone. All I feel is a sense of dread. And this scripture said, she's clothed with strength and dignity and she laughs without fear of the future. I was sobbing and the guy next to me was sobbing because clearly it moved him too. I'm telling you, I would say that every day. I'm clothed with strength and dignity. I laugh without fear of the future as I'm crying because it was what got me through. And I think it's good. We have shared it. It, I never want to go back to that. Yeah, same. I never want to go back, but I was the same. I was like, there, Whoa. I never experienced that kind of anxiety and depression and I would just be like yeah. crying and like, you know, I was like playing my mantras and my meditations and trying yeah. to get out of it. And it's Me like, too. it didn't work, it's kind but of I kept trying. <laughs> yeah. Me too. Well, you know what I learned through that is sometimes you just take a step forward. Yeah. All you can do is do what you have yeah. to do for the day. So I exactly. write my tasks out the night before. Yeah. So I made myself do it. And then I'd come home and get into bed and be crying. And my husband would be like, we got to get through this. <laughs> Yeah, it was going on. It was it's crazy. That's I know. I felt the same way, and I was like, Ugh, and my husband was awful. like, "Are you okay?" Like he was like, he's like, but I think it's just it's crazy when you start talking about it. You're like, wow, other people mm-hmm. have gone through this or are going through it, but we were all afraid to talk about it at the time, and yeah. so I think it's like, yeah, it's you are afraid to, to talk about yeah. it. Yeah, the kindness and vulnerability are huge, and that authenticity. <laughs> and the authenticity is what really allows you to connect with people on a deeper level. I think. But also it's what, um, I don't know if you've gone down the rabbit hole of this, but there's like the human vibrational frequency scale and authenticity vibrates at the highest level. And so that's what attracts all the abundance and all the good into your life because you're living in your authentic power. So well, all that kind I got to say something about the, vibra- the vibrations and stuff yeah. is it's interesting because I've been studying that a lot and, and <laughs> all of that to get out of the stuff we had last year because yeah. you're low yes, yes, so yes. vibration that, yeah you're, oh, like, yeah. you're way 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 that, down that, here that, that was me so last year you, too you get up but i will tell you when you are being positive and authentic mm-hmm. i will literally think about someone i will yeah. and be like huh and they will call me the next day oh yes or think about someone and i'll call them and they'll go i was just going to call you like, I really think yeah. we have to pay attention to those signals and signs more. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Because I think that they're so, and I think that's because we are out of that. Yeah. And we're, we've, we've raised it up. Yeah. Yes, I yeah. agree. Being authentic. I'm not attracted to inauthentic people. Yeah, me neither. And I, and that's, I, I was like, it's so funny. I, I think we dove down the same rabbit hole last year trying to get out we of our did. funk. I should have called you. We should have called you, Greg. I don't want to be crying I on the phone. You're like, get out. <laughs> like in I bed. Think... Like I was like, like, yeah, in my, I would come home. I'd get yes. home, I don't know, 4, 4.35. Yes. And I put my pajamas on and my husband would be like, really? I'm like, really? <laughs> yeah. And I cooked dinner in my pajamas in my slippers. <laughs> I was just, it was bad. Yeah. It was a bad, bad, yeah. It, it was a bad year it for me too. Sucked. Yeah, same thing. And I was like, it this is so sucked. unlike me because- I think you and I are still we're very positive, positive go-getters like yeah. usually out and about every night like at networking events and yeah. so my husband was like are you okay like you're like not going out with your friend you're like that was me <laughs> that was me it. I was just like I could barely take the dogs on a walk yeah. it was terrible yeah. it's crazy this year is much different and yeah. better and oh, it, yeah, it is a weird it's still a weird yeah. market but it's it's still thriving and I'm still doing great but it's it's a different energy completely different energy and a lot of it, I will tell you, is sometimes when when your garden is wet, you know, when God weeds your garden, removes people. Sometimes that is part of it. Like I had some interesting things last year and this year is different. And then who puts 
these amazing, I think you have to value the people that you're are in your life and you've crossed paths with and be intentional about letting them know how important they are. And that changes everything too. It's weird. Yeah. It's really I agree. interesting. Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, I agree I with you wholeheartedly five, about so many things. We're definitely like soul sisters and we kindred are. spirits. Oh, like... totally. Ever since <laughs> that day in Cherry Creek in the office, of, yeah. in the office when we yeah. sat there, we were like, oh, I love you. And you're like, I, I just love, love you. You're on your way to Aspen and I yeah. met your husband. Yeah. I know. When you I left, was like, I was oh, like, God. dang, she's it for me. No. Yeah, I, I know. I, Everything. And like, Lisa, too. Yeah. Lisa, you feel the same way. She's yeah. so cool. She is. She's amazing. Yeah, you Her two and I ladies been... are my favorite. Yeah. Aw, thank you. We I love you. I love, we love you so I love you, girls. And yeah. you just inspire women. Like, anything you post is always Aww. so up here. It's like, <laughs> yes, that's what I want to reach for. <laughs> and it's a good reminder to me to do that, that too, because mm -hmm. I think we want to have, like, momentum to know we can do it. Yeah. So yeah. I love seeing it. I can't wait to come to your event. Oh, yeah. I'm you know. so excited. I'm so excited That'd to have you part so of our. Excited. Yeah. We're starting yeah. this ultra. So I'll, I'll keep you posted. We're okay. going to be starting like a really high ticket because actually a big part of it was based on your feedback. So thank you for inspiring it. Um, Because so it's a lot of I remember we spoke about this a while ago and you mentioned, you know, I wish and it's a mix of your feedback and I'm part of EO. Lisa's part of YPO. And these are both. um. But, you know, I'm sure you heard of both of them, and they're both huge masterminds that are global. And so we're like, why does this not exist for real estate? Um, and so we're creating basically our own version of EOYPL specifically for real estate agents and investors. So you have to qualify based on your sales volume or your investment portfolio. So you have to, so you have to do 15 million or more um, in sales volume consistently um, for more than a year. Uh, so for at least two to three years. Um, we're still trying to figure out if it's two or three. And then you also have, or you can qualify based on your um, investment portfolio if you have 10 million or more in an assets under management. And then, so it's going to be a very high level networking because in that way it's, it's, I mean, I love helping new agents, but it's definitely I different conversations. And so like, it is, and these sometimes podcasts, we need yeah. it too. Uh, yeah, we need, exactly. We need yes. it. I, I love, I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. But we need our yes. level and people too, because we want to go up. Yes. And it's so it's peer to peer, like, like elevating one I another. I love it because it's like these podcasts are great for helping the newer agents. But when you and I are looking for someone to learn from, to collaborate with, like it's a different level of conversation when it's someone who's done, you know, fifty million sales volume a year, someone who's sold a twenty million dollar property. It's a very different conversation. And so we're gonna create a high level, high ticket mastermind specifically for people and. And it's going to be fun. So it's going to be high ticket because we're going to do fun stuff. Like we're going to go on retreats four times a year. We're going to go on like basically it'll be a vacation that's very educational and very collaborative. And we're going to have great value. Like I'm going to invite some of my um, eight figure founder friends who like scaled like one of my mentors. She her business is 13, 14 million revenue a year. And so I'm going to have her come teach um, her system for how she runs her business because the system that she utilizes is industry agnostic because she scaled three different eight figure businesses. I'll, I'll actually share it with you. I, I don't care. I'll share it with you. I, don't, I know you. I'll, I'll email it to you. I created a matrix based on what she taught me that is the simplest way to run your business. So I'll, I'll email yes. you the... I'm send actually, me. That's I gotta what, see yeah, it. I'll send it to you. It's really easy. See, I love it's that so because awesome. it's yeah. hard for you and I. I mean, if yeah. you have those YPOs and the, yeah. the one you're a part of, yeah. I don't have yeah. that here in Colorado. And yeah. that's the one thing we're lacking yeah. is the mastermind yeah. for... The high level. High yeah. level mastermind for women. I yes. 100% agree. Yeah, so that's what we're doing. We're creating one oh, for specifically for women in real estate, agents and investors that income or asset qualify. And so it'll be people who are seasoned and established and have the experience and the stories and the networks and the resources and connections to share with one another. Because that's the whole different, like the investors that I'm working with, if they're buying a $20 million like property here, they would probably consider something in your market. You know what I mean? Like, and same, same vice versa. But like, you know, it's, it's totally different than working with the first time home buyer. Like it's a totally different conversation. Well, yeah, it is. And you can't have a conversation with some like, <laughs> okay, I, what are the pros and cons of selling that $6 million house? If the person you're talking to has never sold a $6 million yes, house. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. I'm in, I'm in a yeah. little bit. Yeah. It's exciting. <laughs> but you inspired that. I remember wait. we had the conversation and you said yeah, like, I remember you know, that, 
I remember you mentioned something where you're like, I wish there was something where it's only like experienced and seasoned agents. And I was like, and I was like, I think that should exist. Why doesn't it? And then I was like, and then after I joined EO, I was like, this has changed my life. Like having this peer group and having this camaraderie and hearing the experiences and the insights from people who have built 10, 20, $50 million businesses has absolutely changed and forced me to level up in the best way possible. And so I want to share that with women in real estate and same with Lisa where she's got YPO and we're like, wow, like being in these mastermind groups, it's the value I've gotten out of it. The money I've paid is tenfold. Like I don't even care. Like people are like, how much do you pay? I was like, I stopped counting after year one. Like I just on auto pay. I don't care because the ROI I get from that group is so insane that I don't even check my credit card statement. I'm like, it's chump chain compared to the value I get. So <laughs> that's amazing. It's amazing. I can't yeah. wait. Yeah, so I'm so excited. So thank you for inspiring that. That's part of yeah, your you're doing welcome. and your feedback. <laughs> you're welcome. I am happy yeah, to Yeah, super excited. Super excited. So yeah, I think we're we're like we went on an hour. So I'd love for you to wrap up with oh, kind of what's thank your you. what's your like, you know, final or best piece of advice for <laughs> an agent who's newer or starting out. Um, what do you wish you knew back then? I wish I knew to wake up every day and be intentional. Start with start with affirmations of what your of gratitude. Start with what you're wanting to believe for. Fill your mind with that first before you take those calls. Have your cup of coffee and calmness, and then have an intentional day where you have a calendar and you hit the ground running and you make the goals, and then go home and have dinner and breathe. Yes, you're still going to get calls, but be intentional about your day. You get so much more done productively instead of this la 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 la. la you know, block time out. And then I have a year calendar. If you can schedule your marketing weekly, bi-weekly, quarterly, monthly, yearly, you have a calendar, you will not feel like you're losing your brain. You know, that would, that's what I did not get taught. Yeah. I that love part. that. Yeah. I love that you schedule like, so, cause it's all about that consistency. Yeah, right? I think that's an important lesson and that, that the time blocking and the consistency <laughs> mm -hmm. that you mentioned those are two major lessons that people need yeah. to learn early on. That we and that we are being not taught that. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. not. And I'm like, I will be the first to admit I learned most of my best lessons from failures and fuck ups. Is what I call yeah. it. Me, and, uh, me too. <laughs> losing, losing, being, be going like, holy crap, that could have been mine. And then learning and learning, and that, you know, we we all are exhausted at some point. You have to. To, to figure it out and you want to be the best. So you're trying to obviously be the best, but yeah, it's a hard one to learn. That's something we can teach other. Now we need someone to teach us. Okay. Now that we're doing that, what else can we do that's above that? That's what I, what I wish there was something for you and I for that, but we're going to create it. You're going to create it. And I'm yeah, gonna we're going to create that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're going to scale Good. up and collaborate because I feel like it's like, scale you know, up. there's, I, um, Ken McElroy, Robert Kiyosaki's business co partner is Lisa's personal mentor. And I see um, that all the time. I'm so yeah. jealous. Yeah. And so she, um, there's, he planned Limitless Expo last year and she spoke at that. And one of the messages and key takeaways that they shared was that everyone at the top is collaborating. And I hear that time and time again, it, as well as in my EO circles. And I've witnessed it firsthand, like, you know, competition doesn't exist at the top. Everyone at the top is collaborating. And everyone at the top realizes a simple concept, which is alone, we are limited. Together, we are limitless. And when you collaborate with people, which is why these masterminds are important, because then you find the business partners, the joint venture people, the people that you could be like, hey, I want to develop a luxury wellness resort. And I literally found my team through EL. And it's like, okay, I'm like the real estate investor, acquisition specialist, but I found the architect and interior designer. I found the construction person through EO. And it's like, I never would have had these people. And I know they're credible because they've already scaled their business to a million plus revenue. So like, I never would have thought I could develop a luxury wellness resort. Like, because I only had one component of the puzzle piece, but I found the other piece of the puzzle through EO. And that's my hope for our mastermind is like, to be like, hey, if you want to invest, let's go big. Why go with one or two single family homes when you go for a 200 unit multifamily property and you just find the right partners and you have like a few partners and all of a sudden instead of going for one or two single family homes you're going for a two 300 unit multifamily property instead and that is how you level up and how you experience 
exponential level growth. Up. Level up. That's <laughs> going to be my new word. I'm going to be yes. telling everyone, level up. <laughs> yes. They're going to be annoying. <laughs> well, I, I can't so wait excited. to see you. I know. Yes. We're going to get together and you're going to plan your date to come here. And I'm actually yes. coming out there. So I'm going to oh, call yes. you separately. Yeah. Yeah. Let okay. me know when you're out here. I'm going to check okay. my calendar. I have a lot of travel in the next two weeks. I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to Scottsdale next week. I see this weekend I'm heading there. And then I'm going to Singapore um, in April. Oh, wow. Okay. Send me your date. So I'll go, I'll do it around you. Yeah. And then, so then I'm going to, and then think I'm going to try to go to Playa del Carmen in May because I want to go look at some investment properties there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So like, it's fun. (laughs) They're so cheap. I don't know if you've heard about it, but um, they're like 150 to 200,000 and it's five minute walk from the beach in like a luxury condo resort. And oh, I'm like, so a luxury great. condo building rather. And I'm like, oh, that's really cheap for yeah, a five I'll minute walk from the beach. I was like, for 200 <laughs> grand, that's like, what the, I was like, I was like, I need to see this for myself because the pictures look amazing. <laughs> it has like a rooftop pool. It's like super modern. And I'm like, what's the catch? Like, why is it only yeah. 200? And the HOAs are low. They're like, I think the equivalent of like 200 ish a month or less. So I was like, that's great. I was like, what is the hey, catch? Why is it so, so cheap? So let me know. Let me know. Well, let I will me let you know. know for sure. Yeah. So I'm going to go look at All some right. investments in Playa del Carmen, hopefully in May. Okay. Well, I so good it. to connect. Thank you again for Thank making time. You. Yes. You're, 